The COVID-19 Prevention and Control Amendment No. 2 Act received the approval of the House of Assembly on Tuesday, 31st August 2021. The amendments which allow the enactment of key changes to the COVID-19 management operations in St. Lucia include the removal of a minister as the head of the COVID-19 management body, protocol breaches to be changed to ticketable offences, and the name change of the command centre to the National COVID-19 Management Centre. In the Act, the command centre advises Cabinet on matters relating to COVID-19 and has oversight activities required to reduce or prevent the spread of COVID-19. A command center is generally seen as a place used to provide centralized knowledge for a particular purpose. The name, Mr. Speaker, does not suggest any connection with the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, the bill amends the act to change the name of the command center to the National COVID-19 Management Center. This new nomenclature makes it clear that this body of persons is in, Saint, is in Saint Lucia, responsible for administering and supervising the COVID-19 pandemic. The amendments to the Act also facilitate the addition of representatives from the Trade Union Federation, the private sector, Saint Lucia Medical Dental Association, youth organizations, and other individuals approved by the Cabinet to the COVID-19 decision-making body. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs Honorable Moses Jabatis pointed out that while the pandemic has ravaged the economy and social systems in St. Lucia, the amendments allow the government to be timely in its COVID-19 response. He highlighted measures enacted by the government to bolster the country's coronavirus prevention campaign. These include the establishment of a new communication system at the Victoria Respiratory Hospital and the supplementation of 12 cell phones and accompanying packages to doctors and nurses. And as we speak, there are now eight new medical support staff at Victoria Hospital. Today, they went in today, Mr. Speaker. Before Friday of this week, we are going to have 15, no, 12 patient welfare assistants at the Victoria Hospital. They'll be trained, and before Friday of this week, this problem with relatives bringing things to the patients and it takes days, it's not the fault of the, the staff. The doctors are so burdened, even to tell you their stories. So we need people to bridge that gap and to make the experience better for our people. The minister added that patient welfare assistance will also be employed at other major medical facilities around the island.